أي اعتداء أمريكي لن يبقى أبدا بدون رد والرد لن يكون فقط Among the many militant groups in the Middle East, the Houthi group stands out as particularly strong. Remarkably, even though they operate on the scale of a smaller group, they have managed to challenge and confront global superpowers like the United States and the United Kingdom. Typically, if we analyze this situation further, a militant group would not possess substantial funds to engage in warfare against a nation, especially not against powers like America or Britain. Yet the reality is that to this day, they continue to resist, notably by enforcing a blockade in the Red Sea. It's made up of nationals from Bulgaria, Ukraine, the Philippines, and other countries. All communications have since. Several militant groups in the Middle East, such as Hamas, Hezbollah, and others, are considered quite bold because they were established by Iran and are seen as Iranian proxies. However, some analysts believe that the relationship between Iran and the Houthi group is different. These analysts view their relationship as more of a partnership. In other words, the Houthi group is perceived to operate independently, without direct intervention or financial support from Iran. If this partnership theory is accurate, it suggests that Iran likely charges the Houthi group for the weapons they provide. This is different from groups like Hamas and Hezbollah, which are said to receive weapons from Iran without monetary compensation. If this is true, it raises the question, where do the Houthis obtain the funds to continue their blockade activities in the Red Sea? <laughs> United Nations experts have discovered that the Houthi group has several significant sources of revenue. For instance, during the ceasefire brokered by the United Nations from April 2nd to November 30th, it was found that 69 tanker ships had delivered 1,810,498 tons of derivative oil to the port of Hodeida, which is controlled by the Houthi group. As a result, this militant group was able to earn a substantial income amounting to 271.9 billion Yemeni reals, or approximately $271 million. However, this revenue should have been allocated to public workers in the areas under their control in accordance with the Stockholm Agreement. This agreement stipulated that the Houthi group must collect customs duties on oil imports through the port of Hodeida, with the condition that they pay civil servant salaries. Reports indicate that the Houthi group has not paid these salaries at all. This means that the group's revenue is even larger, as they are not incurring operational costs. <laughs> Moreover, the militant group also generates income from various other sources, such as taxes on mobile phone and landline services, oil, banks, hospitals, pharmacies, and zakat, a form of almsgiving. Collectively, these taxes are estimated to bring the Houthi group around 45 billion Yemeni reals, or approximately $179 million annually. This figure does not include a new levy known as the Kums tax, which applies to the mineral, water, fishery industries, and other economic activities. United Nations experts also found that the Houthi group obtains funds from real estate properties, which have become a significant source of income for them. They have forcibly seized much of the land and buildings in the territories they control. Additionally, they use various telecommunications companies to send millions of messages soliciting support and financial donations for their war expenses. <laughs> Another shocking revelation is the claim that the Houthi group is involved in smuggling and trading illegal drugs to finance their military activities. This claim comes from findings by Saudi Arabian authorities who intercepted several shipments of illegal drugs originating from the Houthis in Yemen. These drugs were discovered at the ports of Wadia, Qadra, Ulab, Tuwal, and Jazan. حيث أحبط حدود 
اليمني كميات كبيرة من مادة الحشيش المخدر في Speaking of smuggling, the Houthi group also collaborates with Iran to smuggle weapons. This smuggling is reportedly carried out by sea using ships. For instance, United Nations findings revealed the smuggling of 52 containers carrying nine M133 Cornet anti-tank missiles, which had been hidden inside four large electric generators. نصر من الحرس الثوري غير أن المتمردين أطلقوا سراحهم فور انقلابهم على السلطة في صنعاء وبين العناصر التي However, Iran does not always send weapons in a ready-to-use form. For example, when smuggling their Quds ballistic missiles to Yemen, it was found that these missiles were sent as spare parts and then assembled in Houthi-controlled areas. This method of smuggling makes the ballistic missiles difficult to detect. With their income and weaponry, the Houthi group will continue to exist and maintain the blockade in the Red Sea. The primary aim of this blockade is to force Israel to cease its attacks on Palestine. Since Israel refuses to stop its attacks, the Houthi group's blockade will undoubtedly persist. Believe it or not, this blockade significantly disrupts the global economy, causing inflation in various countries. As we know, the Red Sea and the Suez Canal serve as alternative routes for trade ships. This alternative route not only saves time, but also reduces shipping costs. Consequently, the Red Sea and the Suez Canal are crucial in minimizing the time and expenses of export-import shipping for Europe and Asia. However, because the Red Sea is blockaded by the Houthi group, trading ships are compelled to choose a longer yet safer route around Africa. This change leads to an increase in global shipping costs and longer delivery times. Consequently, central banks are quite concerned about the Houthi group's blockade in the Red Sea as it can cause significant inflation spikes in various countries. European countries and those in the Mediterranean region will undoubtedly feel significant impacts from the blockade imposed by the Houthi militant group. Even some countries in North Africa, such as Tunisia and Algeria, are not spared from the blockade's effects as these two nations engage in trade with Asia via the Suez Canal. Moreover, one of the countries most adversely affected by this blockade is Egypt. Egypt heavily relies on transit fees from the Suez Canal, and the blockade has reportedly caused the country to lose a quarter of its transit revenue. What about Israel? Does it also feel the impact? <laughs> Indeed, Israel is also affected by the Houthi group's actions in the Red Sea. All ships flying the Israeli flag or having connections with Israel are at risk of being attacked by the Houthi group. Furthermore, Israel has suffered because its traffic through the southern port of Eilat has come to a halt. It can be said that the Houthi group has a substantial global impact with its actions. However, this does not mean they do not also have a significant impact within Yemen. One notable action with a considerable impact on Yemen was when they minted new 100 rial coins. The stated reason for minting their own currency was to address the issue of damaged banknotes. <laughs> However, some analysts in Yemen suspect that this reason is merely a pretext. In reality, the new coins are seen as a form of defiance against the Yemeni authorities. The Houthi group appears to be striving for autonomy with their own currency. As a result, Yemeni authorities have urged the public not to use the currency minted by the Houthi group. Additionally, Yemeni authorities have instructed banks in Houthi-controlled areas to relocate their headquarters to Aden within 60 days.
Some analysts suspect that the Houthi group's plans for an independent economy began to take shape when Yemeni authorities printed new currency in 2019. Concerned about potential inflation, the Houthi group banned civilians in their controlled areas from using the newly issued Yemeni banknotes. Eventually, this militant group issued its own version of the Rial. Reportedly, the exchange rate of the Rial created by the Houthi group is significantly higher. For comparison, one US dollar is equivalent to 1,650 Yemeni Rials issued by the official authorities whereas the Houthi group has set their rate at 560 riels per US dollar. Of the United Nations, Your Majesties, Royal Highnesses, Excellency. This disparity has understandably caused significant concern for the Yemeni authorities. Moreover, the Houthi group has taken control over the financial markets in the regions they dominate. They have established 180 oil import companies, 250 currency exchange businesses, and 1,023 trading companies, all of which have been granted tax and customs exemptions.